seen that before. What were your thoughts on the blower door test? What did that reveal to you? What did it reveal to me? Sure. I don't know what it revealed, but it's good to see the, um, the test. And yeah, the test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the numbers. Yeah. Okay. And so, did anybody actually feel air leakage oh, yeah. coming yeah. out? Of, yeah. Where did where did you maybe see that? There was a little bit around the corner of the window there, there in, the, in the outside. Like I said, we get it in the model. Okay. Um, okay. Could, could be a very little bit. Right here too. Right. Did you guys you saw some out there as well? Garage, small space. But that okay. back door is. Oh, uh, it's like, no. This one's a garage. Okay. Then the garage sells off. Okay. Okay. And then did anybody see up in up in the attic? You saw that big hole up there, right? So we saw the spray foam and all that stuff up there. Okay. All right, so um, on the energy efficiency side, how does air leakage result in energy efficiency? Anybody want to answer that one? Big negative. Big negative. Which part of it? Energy efficiency is a big negative? No, the air leakage. You don't want outdoor air coming in the house excessively anyway. Okay, so it says the HVAC designer, what's going to happen if you've got too much air coming in and out and you don't want that? Well, first thing, you've got to, you've got to pay money to condition that air, right? Mm -hmm. right. you, know, so you want to contain what's inside the envelope right. and not pay that condition outdoor air. Also, your air quality inside could suffer because you're bringing in outside ambient air. Right. That could be, you know, this, for instance, this house is close to the road, mm -hmm. right? So there's probably a lot of uh, gaseous contaminants in this, right in this local area. So you want to keep that outside. Okay. And we market that big time as far as things coming into the home. Mm -hmm. We, um, I mean, these homes typically only need to be dusted maybe like once every two or three months. Um, we've had doctors prescribe the homes for people with, you know, breathing illnesses before. So the, the if you have someone in the home that has asthma or allergies, they're going to breathe a lot better in the home. What kind of filtration do you use? What, what's the verb rating? Uh, I wanted, uh, April Air just came in this past week. It's I think it's verb 11. 11. I think yeah. it's 11. It's from 11 years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's standard now, so. Okay. So we saw some, um, there's some signs throughout, so little placards that talk about the energy efficiency. So I saw LED lighting, lighting mm -hmm. I believe. Um, we saw the spray foam up in the attic. Did you guys see anything else? What did you see? Any other yeah, energy no. efficiency windows. features? Okay. The windows, yeah, we use the low E windows. Um, we also use a lot of low or no VOC paints or carpets, <coughs> so you're not getting you know, those, um, you know, you're not breathing in those whenever the, it starts to cure. So anything that, that Meritage can put in the home that makes sense as far as margins, they'll try to do. They typically spend, I think the number is like 50, $60 million a year, more than our competitors and, you know, health benefits into the home. Okay, this is a good one to be at. All right, so um, energy efficiency and blower door, we talked about that. Let's go back to HVC low calc and duct design. So Sam, do you guys perform low calcs? Is that the normal job of the rater? Is that the HVAC company? And actually maybe what is a load calculation first off? Let's start there. So um, generally when you are building a home, you need to decide on the size of the HVAC equipment you're gonna to use to heat and cool the home. And then you also need to figure out how much of that needs to get put in each area of the house. And then you need to figure out how it's gonna get from point A to point B as well efficiently. So um, that generally we would call an HVAC design kind of a very, you know, really high level view of it. Um, these homes, and really all homes should have this, but um, as a requirement of the Energy Start program, um, we don't do the load caps on these homes. We check them for uh, certain data points that Energy Star feels like is really important, such as uh, making sure the square footages are right, um, making sure the square footage of glass is right, making sure the number of bedrooms are right, the amount of fresh air is correct. Um, and then to kind of close the loop on that a little bit, we take their design and they're designed, um, for example, their fresh air design that says, I'm gonna bring in uh, 20 CFM, 24 hours a day, we come out here and we measure the airflow of the fresh air system to make sure it's bringing that in. So it's kind of um, a lot of design up front that's been checked on the back end. Um, and that's kind of how our, we play it with the HVC contractor in, in this uh, new construction environment. For non-Energy Star homes um, and homes that are not HERS rated or other, other things, 
Uh, typically, there is some type of blood done for the house. Um, it may be uh, a rule of thumb that's used. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, someone is designing or, or determining how large the equipment needs to be for a, a particular house. We do provide load loads. We just don't for Meritage. Load calculation yeah. services. Correct. Okay. Now, on that note, one that I did not mention with the change in code, presently, load calculation required to be turned to the inspector before a certificate of occup occupation could be issued for the house. That will no longer be true as of 2019. No way. You're still required to do the calculations. You're not required to turn them in now. Um, part of the reason, which is legit, closings were being held up because you're three days away from closing. They're trying to get a CO calculations either weren't right or weren't turned in but instead of saying well well how can we why don't we ask for them at design when they're supposed to be done they decide not to ask for them at all so. in South Carolina we see a lot of people requiring that at the uh, permit application stage that's where it should be yeah, yeah. and that's one of the things we're going to ask for going forward right so. And so since we have ventilation person ventilation person ventilation person mm -hmm. can you guys talk a little bit about the the V side of HVAC, just about the design process maybe, or maybe just a little bit on the install process as well, and how that contributes to energy efficiency? Well, I'm, you know, I'm really a little more familiar with ERVs being used in the ventilation system. Sure. You know, especially from an energy efficiency standpoint. So I, that's why I'm asking questions to Sam about the April Air unit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not real familiar with that product. Okay. How do your products work then? <laughs> well. We, it brings in it, it tempers and conditions outside air. You get fresh air introduction, but it's being tempered and conditioned with stale stagnant inside air. So you have, there's energy recovery that comes back. You know, our product has uh, a 73% recovery rate on the latent and sensible transference. So I was actually watching this old house on, on PBS on Saturday because I had nothing else better to do. And they were talking about <laughs> ERVs and HRVs and they actually showed a, a cutout and they showed how you, you guys are building scientists, I'm not, but you know, kind of cold air comes in this way and hot air comes in this way and it exchanges and then the correct air gets to the other places and it kind of pre <coughs> the system a little bit to make sure that if you had hot air, it's being used as hot air in the house in the right place. Exactly. Cold air, cold air, is that right? Yeah. All right, I'm building scientists now. Well, <laughs> uh, HRVs you wouldn't use in this climate though because there's no moisture transfer. And that's because this old house does everything up in Boston, I think, right? So, that's right. And and also, okay. One advantage of the ERVs some of these too is you don't necessarily have to have them tied into the return of the HVAC and the line of the HVAC to distribute that air. Uh, one of the units we have can be set up that way or it can be set up as a standalone unit. Um, so it's just not written on its own. People oftentimes leave it run 24-7. Okay. So another question that we had was about the insulation package. So um, how many types of insulation are we familiar with? So we saw spray foam upstairs. What else are homes built with for insulation? Fiberglass. Fiberglass. What else? Cellulose. 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 What else? Rock wool. Rock wool. What else? Foam board. Foam board. What else? I don't know how many there are, but we're, we're going here. <laughs> All right, well, there's we, five. We've hit the hitters. We hit the big yeah. ones? Okay. So this house has spray foam, so it was on the roof deck, is that right, Sam? Mm -hmm. And then how much spray foam was that, do you think? Thereabouts? I think that's uh, like R21. Okay. Mm -hmm. So about five inches, five and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so the added benefit of spray foam is that it's gonna do some air sealing as well as insulation, is that correct? Right. Okay. And it's Sorry. just an air barrier as well, so you don't have to have a sheetrock covering it. Um, like a bat, you have to have air barrier in all six sides for it to perform to its optimal potential. Yeah. Where spray foam doesn't need that. Okay. So spray foam does a couple of things at once as opposed to a different type of insulation where you need to air seal first, make a full assembly, put the fiberglass in, make sure it's taped off and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the only problem is it costs about three times as much to do. Um, and my, my question is, you know if that's open or closed cell on this? That's open cell. Open cell. Is there a sign here? Okay. It's closed cell. It's open. Yeah, it's open. Mm -hmm. um, so on the IAQ side, so IAQ is indoor air quality. So as this is an ENERGY STAR house, it's got some minimum requirements. So 
who can answer some of the questions about IAQ or just kind of what are the benefits here? I, I'd, I'd like to know if, if anybody knows how it's tested. Right, sure. Okay. If, I, if I'm a builder and I say my house has clean indoor air, how do mm -hmm. I prove that? How, how, if I want to know what are you measuring to, how do you know it's clean mm -hmm. as compared to what? Okay. I don't know the answer to that. How's that happen? You're rating on your filter and your HVAC system. I mean, you're not doing CO2 test or um, particulate uh, matter in the air right. testing. It's going to so, go basically off like the MERV rating on your filter. So we're looking at equipment and paperwork to verify that good indoor air quality addressing products and materials were actually installed. Yeah. And fresh air exchange is providing good indoor air quality through dilution. Your contaminants are being exhausted and replenished with the baseline air, which is your outdoor air. What we're currently measuring is how close we can get to the prescriptive code of acceptability in indoor air quality as opposed to measuring the indoor air quality itself. And then also the sealants on the cabinets, um, if they're a particle board, are they sealed off from the inside? Um, whether you have carpet, which is a, can become a storage of contaminants. So it's, it includes a lot of your products as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, off-gassing of granite, I mean, you have the radon could be emitted from granite. Okay. And so I think when, you know, when we at NCBPA talk about performance and high performance, we're looking at energy, water, mm -hmm. comfort, health, safety, things like that. But those varying degrees of performance kind of get into what Ron's talking about, which are sort of known on the green side of things. So how green is a home with VOCs and off-gassing materials and maybe where the materials were sourced from? Are these floors you know, manufactured in the USA where they shipped in from? China, is that a concern of ours? Is that something that we care about as the homeowner or the builder? And those are all different levels of options that are available to folks for green energy efficiency and, and high performance as well. So, um, okay, and then um, meeting standards. So Sam, you just performance tested this house to some degree. Um, how did it do and how do you know um, if it met the standards? Yeah, so um we talked a little bit about ACH50, or what, that's what we, what we call it, but how many, um, we were using numbers like 0.6 or 1.6 or 2, and what we're measuring when we do that is, if, while we're running that fan and all that air is exhausting out, how long does it take to exhaust all the air in the house out through that fan and have it replaced with new outdoor air? So when we're saying like, this house is a two, for example, we're saying if I run that fan for an hour, it'll replace all the air in this house two times. So the tighter the house is, the lower that number is. So that's that. the benefit of that number is, is that it's kind of scaled somewhat for the size of the house, right? So a larger house or a smaller house, we can still use that ACH number. We're not using just the total CFM number because on a much larger house or a much smaller house, that same amount of leakage is going to mean something different, right? So um, we use this ACH number, and, and as long as we're kind of in this, this range, we're feeling good about it. Um, another thing we would do as part of our final performance um, evaluation on the house, we're going to take account for all the types of lighting. We're going to take all the model numbers off of all the appliances. We're going to get model numbers off the heating and cooling equipment. Um, and uh, make sure that anything that was left over from our previous inspections on the house is already tightened up. So also we're gonna check the ducts for their tightness. Um, and then we're gonna go back to the office and we're gonna look up all these model numbers, plug all that information in, do the calculations for the lighting and all that stuff, dump it into some software and that's gonna tell us how we kind of finally fall out. Um, but generally, when you come on site to a house like this and you can see a lot of the things and you get good readings on your duct testing and your floor door testing, you know the house is going to pass. So a leading question to that thing that you have in your hand. Let's say that we're in this house and for some unfortunate reason somebody didn't check to see how much insulation was in the walls that now have drywall on top of them. Yeah. Does that happen sometimes? All the time. 
All right, That's so why I've got it today. So how does that happen? <laughs> and then how do you address the problem? Maybe? Yeah. So um, if, for example, we happen to note when we were out here, because you know, all of these certification programs require us to come out and look at the house before the sheet rocks up. We want to see this insulation before it gets covered up. And if we note something that's wrong with the sheetrock or the framing, and um, this is a third party program, right? So if we note something that's wrong that we saw, we need some way to verify that the corrections have been made, right? Because we don't want to just be in a position where we're just taking somebody else's word for what was fixed. So what we like to do is we, we definitely want to, if we can, come back with a thermal camera and make sure any insulation problems were fixed, if it's something that's visible. And the same thing, a lot of framing problems, believe it or not, we can check with this as well. Um, so it's all pretty standard stuff. Today, with the temperature difference right now, it's not a great day to do use this tool, but um, could definitely show you kind of some of the things we would look at. What is that tool? Do what? What is that tool? Oh, the thermal camera. So this is a thermal camera, and what it does is it sees surface temperatures. Um, and this can be a builder's best friend or worst nightmare, depending on who's holding it, right? <laughs> um, so because it, it doesn't necessarily see through the walls or anything like that, it can't see through anything. All it sees is that surface temperature. So um, that's very important for us, who, people who live in houses, because believe it or not, this what we call mean radiant surface temperatures, the surface temperatures around us, has the biggest impact on how we interpret comfort of, of anything. So we talk a lot about humidity, we talk a lot about your thermostat set point and all this other stuff, but the insulation and the air sealing, um, in addition to improving the utility usage on the house, it really keeps the house comfortable by controlling those surface temperatures around us. So I think, um, ASHRAE says something like 70% of our interpretation of comfort comes from the surface temperatures around us. So that all of a sudden makes this a very important tool because all it's doing is it's measuring a bunch of surface temperatures at once and putting them in a display so we can kind of see that. Um, so not only do we get an idea for what's been fixed, but we get an idea if we think we may have a potential comfort problem and all kinds of other things like that. So um, it doesn't, uh, it's nothing to be scared of. It's just a sophisticated thermometer, really. Um, now, you put a tool like this in the hands of someone who has not um, had at least a little bit of training to use it or understands what they're looking at, and suddenly you're starting to see things that aren't necessarily there. Um, so, uh, you know, um, I don't want to oversell or understate the importance of this and, and of a little training to do that, but um, if, uh, if we were to, let's, let's take a look at this wall right here and uh, if everybody, Ryan is that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go here. A few adjustments really quick. this wall here and we can see some interesting things going on um, I can see where the uh, framing members are in this wall um, I can actually even I'm looking really close see these little black dots or little dark blue dots through here those are actually the drywall screws that are holding in the drywall so that shows you kind of how good of a thermal bridge that little metal screw is from outdoor to inside to bring that coldness or, or really what we're doing is we're letting the heat go out there right um, I can see some so the dark is the heat loss the dark is the cooler spots yeah the dark is the cooler spots what is that? Um, that? yeah so here it looks like we probably have some uh, beam that's tied into the house where this porch comes in and Maybe an insulator um, pull that insulation out of their way yeah, they probably had to cut a lot of insulation out to allow that beam to sit on top of the wood. Um, one thing that I really am enjoying seeing here is um, above these windows and doors, um, typically um, in a non-Energy Star house, you're going to have all wood above these, and it's going to be really blue. Um, but in this case, I can see that above this, 
It's only only light blue. Um, and the reason it's only light blue is because they did the right thing, which was insulate these headers uh, above these windows. Um, there's a framed house next door where we could walk over there and I'll take a look at what that means if you guys are interested to do that. But um, that's another thing I can get a real quick confirmation of that's done right. Um, so, you know, nothing, uh, nothing sticking out here as being kind of incorrect or anything along those lines. But just to give you an idea of how sensitive this is, if I were to walk over to this wall, and I'm gonna find a good spot, I'll do it right here. If I put my hand on the wall for just a second, um, I'm gonna transfer heat from my skin into that wall. I should be able to come back over here and still see where my handprint is. Wow. So we're talking about very small temperature differences, right? Like 0.1 degrees C, right? So not, not huge measurements, um, but this thing kind of highlights it like it's a big difference. You know what I mean? Um, that's why I'm saying they can be, you know, dangerous if they're kind of misinterpreted. Yeah. Hey Sam, when you're doing a test, are there certain locations that you're looking at, like the corners, the baseboards? Yeah. That type of stuff? yeah. Where's the potential? For so when we're when we're doing this, if we have a house that's failing a blower door test, we can bring up the big guns like this and try to use that to find air leaks. But usually, we're just using our hand. Or sometimes we use a smoke puffer and try to see if we see the smoke moving versus it sitting still. Um, really, the only time we're using this is to try to confirm if there's something from an earlier inspection that we think was done wrong. Yes, sir. Is there a device like that that you could point to the window and tell you what the solar heat mean coefficient is? No, not really. Um, uh, not that I'm aware of. I about the closest thing I've seen allows you to determine if something has low E glass or not. It's like yes or no, but it doesn't allow you that specific of a, of a test without uh, having it in a chamber. Um, but if you're looking at this glass here, where everybody's standing, you can see all of our reflections in it. So um, that's a very good indicator that that glass is reflecting our heat back. Yeah, so, um, yeah, any other questions there? Yeah, that's us. That's us, exactly. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, Sam. Um, so that was a, thank you, Sam, very much sure. for, for doing that demonstration. So that's that's about what we wanted to go over today was just kind of the blower door, the, the benefits of high performance, efficiency, some of the value. Um, like I mentioned when we got started, we've got a couple of resources here for folks just to kind of take with you. Some of these things are on our website as well. Um, we've got the best practices for builders to uh, support improving market valuation. Um, we've got some information about the appraisal process and how you can send a letter to a lender to say this is a high performance home. We are requesting a high performance appraisal or a green appraiser. That's this one here. This is the appraisal addendum. That's the form that documents energy efficiency and renewable energy features in homes, and that should be provided to the appraiser as well. Um, we at NCBPA have a workshop that we can come do for either your company or your customers, or we've got some folks representing cities and municipalities here. We can come out and actually educate people that are involved in energy efficiency about energy efficiency in their own home to help them understand why it's important in the work that they're doing as well. Other resources available on the NCBPA website, and then of course we send all this out to our members. So. If you're not a member, please consider joining so that we can do more events like this. So um, I think that's my piece. I just wanted to say thank you again to Susie and Sam um, for participating and to Kurt as well for providing us the, uh, the code update and um, for all the participation that we've had. So we've got a networking event at 5 o'clock at Nodot Brewery, so we've been having water here. Um, we'll be having uh, different types of water there, but still water. Um, so if you folks are interested, uh, please join us over there. and. Uh, We'll be happy to introduce you guys to some more people that'll be over there. So, and then thank you to Meredith Holmes as well, Chris, oh, yeah. um, for, uh, for having be us here. today. <laughs> um, glad that you were able to be here today oh, yeah. and uh, contribute to the conversation. So, um, if anybody else has any questions, feel free to stick around, and I'm sure that we can uh, answer those. And if not, um, thanks again, and then we'll see everybody at the brewery at five o'clock if you're interested. So. Yeah.